Glory to God. I would like us to visit a favorite portion of scripture. For me, it's, a, it's one of my favorites. As we continue to look at this righteousness, the benefits that accrue from having it. Um, when you go to Romans chapter 5, we are going to read some some verses uh, there. But before Romans 5, we, we, we you know, when you read in the previous chapter, it talks about Abraham and his righteousness and how he received this righteousness. It's received by faith. We don't work for it. This gift of righteousness, it's received um, by faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 2, for if Abraham was justified and established by good works, then he has grounds for boasting, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in God and it was credited to his account as righteousness. This gift of righteousness is credited, that's credited to our account. Hallelujah. Credited to our account. Aren't you grateful to God for that? Just credit it to your account. You believed and the gift of righteousness was credited. Credited. And when you receive this gift, verse 24 of that Roman chapter 4, it says, these words we have been reading from verse 20, from verse 3 down. When you reach verse 22, it says, that is why his faith was created to him as righteousness. 23, but the words it was created to him were not written for his sake alone. But they were written for our sakes too. Righteousness, standing acceptable to God, will be granted and created to us also who believe in God who raised Jesus from the dead. Who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification. I like this, making our account balance and absolving us from all guilt before God. Yeah, that's what it is. Absorbed from all guilt before God. Like, as far as God is concerned, you and I, because of this gift of righteousness, we have been absolved from all guilt. Like from all, as far as God is concerned, there is no guilt whatsoever. Ah, that is called the gospel, the good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. We have, that's what the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And this is not our own making. We don't work for it. It was credited to us. Jesus was raised to life. He was resurrected to secure our justification. Our being absorbed from all guilt before God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now, after making that, um, stating that truth, then it goes over in Romans chapter 5, one of my best chapters in the Bible. And this is what he tells them. Therefore, oh, since we are justified, and in brackets, he puts what it means to be justified. Remember, the previous chapter he was saying, he was raised to life to secure our justification. And justification means being absolved from all guilt before God. Now, in verse 1 of chapter 5, it says, Therefore, since we are justified, in brackets, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold to. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are acquitted. You are declared righteous. Like you are in good... The way to put it in layman's language is that you are in good books with God. Ah. Hallelujah. You're in good books. <laughs> say, I'm in good books. Type in the chat and say, I'm in good books. I, <laughs> I have been reconciled to God. You know, we are born in sin, we were conceived in sin, and uh, we were candidates of death, candidates of God's wrath, because the wages of sin, not sins, the wages of sin is death. Eh? So we were born as candidates of death because of the sin of our forefather Adam, who were born in that sin candidates for death because the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life ah glory to God because of what Jesus did for us on the cross when we accept that sacrifice when we accept the sacrifice we receive peace with God. Peace with God. Hallelujah. And then after we have been declared righteous and have received peace with God, it says through Jesus we have access by faith into this grace. And in brackets says the state of God's favor. So, number one, I'm made righteous by faith in Jesus. Number two, I get access through him to favor. You have access to favor. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody getting this? You have access into God's grace. You have access into His favor. Ah. Hmm. Is somebody getting this? If there are people who have faith, if there, if there is one person in the world that has God's faith, that one person will be you. It is you. Hallelujah. 
these are this is what they call the good news of the gospel this is the good news that i have peace with god there is a scripture in psalms um psalms 32 i think verse 1 I think it is Psalm 32. It says, Blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied is he who has forgiveness of his transgression continually exercised upon him, whose sin is covered. Blessed, happy, Fortunate to be envied, envied is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity. That is you. I said that is you. Because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, you are that man. Hmm. You're that man. And when we understand this, the scripture then tells us, back to Romans chapter 5, the scripture then tells us um, verse 9. Let's read verse 9. Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood. How much more? How much more shall, be, shall we be saved by him from the indignation and wrath of God? So what it tells me is that making me righteous, it's like a... a an assurance that I will be saved from the wrath of God, from the when the wrath of God will be revealed on that day, when punishment for sin will be given, when people will be thrown into the lake of fire, I will be saved from that wrath of God because of the gift of righteousness. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's true. You will be saved. So, <laughs> these things, when you grasp these things, you stop living your life worried. Will I make it? <laughs> will I be there? Will I make it? You will make it. You will be saved from the wrath of God. You will. Eh, hallelujah. For me, this is the good news of the gospel. Of the gospel. Verse 10 says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. It's much more certain. Now that we are reconciled, that we shall be saved daily, daily from sin's dominion through his life. You see? That salvation is not just going to happen at the end of it all. Daily, 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 I am going to be saved from the dominion of sin. Sin shall not be my master. You know, some people think that when you get these truths, you get license to sin. No, you don't get license to sin. You get freed from the dominion of sin. Hey, hallelujah. We shall be saved daily. We shall be daily delivered from sin's dominion through his resurrected life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are looking at the benefits of this righteousness. 
of this righteousness. Mm. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you go down. You read verse 17 that we started with this week. It says, For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So, because of the gift of righteousness, I will reign I will reign as a king in this life. This one, this, 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 this life. You have an anointing to reign. Oh yes. Why he is called the king of kings is because you are one of those people reigning as a king and he is the king over you. Hey, you will reign. The things that were dominating you, you will reign as a king. Sin shall no longer be your master. You will be able to say no to it. You will reign as a king. Yeah, you will reign. You speak to mountains. And they will move. You speak to situations. And they will change. You will reign. As a king. In this life. Because of the gift. Of righteousness. We recover. The dominion. That was given to us. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. That dominion that was given to us. We recover it and we begin to reign as kings. Ah, say I reign. Say I reign. I reign. You go in your prayer room and order certain things in the name of Jesus. You pray and declare certain things and decree certain things and they come to pass. You reign. You reign. Ah, you reign. You reign. You speak to tumors, they disappear. You lay hands on the sick and they recover. You reign as a king in this life. You, you know, you pray for somebody and the report changes. You reign. You reign. Because of the free gift of righteousness, you reign. You reign. You reign and you, you, know, you reign over your body, over your flesh, that it no longer drives you to do the things you used to be addicted to do. Now you can say no. Yes, you can say no to your sinful desires. Now you can say no to those urges, those impulses that used to cause you to go do certain things. Now you can say, no, I will not do it. You reign. You reign in life. Hallelujah. You have dominion. You know, you have dominion over your thought life, you know. The, you know, all those kind of negative thoughts, uh, you reign, you put them down. The Bible says we, 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 we pull down strongholds, every high thing that exalts itself above the mind of God. We pull it down and make it obedient to the mind of Christ. We reign. 
we reign. You refuse to be depressed. You refuse to, you know, to have a pity party. You say, no. You say, I'm blessed. I rejoice in the Lord. You reign. Anybody getting this? You reign. You reign as a king in life. You reign. I release this grace. Today, walk as a reigning champion. Mm. Reign. Reigning champion. Reigning champion. Hallelujah. Reign. The thing that has been dominating you, you shall dominate it. You shall dominate it. In the name of Jesus, you will reign as a king in this life. In the name of Jesus. So, we have seen a number of things. We have, uh, we have peace with God. Okay, we are reconciled to God. We have access into the grace of God. We have access into God's favor. Okay, and we have seen that because of the gift of righteousness, we reign. In life, have you got something? Have you got something this morning? I reign in life. Mm, I reign in life. So don't go down with your head hanging low. Don't go down feeling so sorry for yourself. No, 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 no. Move with your head high. Declare, I reign in life. Even if you are down, even if things have hit you down, even if, you know, dealing with debts and what, and just declare, I reign in life. I reign in life. And then things will begin to align. Things will begin to align. Opportunities will begin to come your way. You know, just declare, keep declaring, I reign in life through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, I reign in life as a king. I reign in life as a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. You will reign in life. You will not be dominated. Yeah. The threats, the manipulation, the, 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 the voices of the enemy, those accusations. You will reign in life as a king over them. You will defeat them in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray as a king declare things as one who is reigning in life stop the begging prayers please 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 no speak to mountains with boldness speak to them with courage as a king who is reigning in life in jesus name amen